Why do you think it's so hard for this to catch on? Because like once you see it, it's very obvious. Once you've seen that young people can start companies and they can yeah. or go play big roles in companies, like it's it's abundantly obvious how much of this is happening and how easy it is to break mm. through and start actually building something meaningful. And yet so many people, yeah. in spite of the what appears to me to be overwhelming evidence that this is the case, so many people just like haven't had the the blindfold taken off yet where they can mm. now see it for what it is. Why is that so hard to overcome? Maybe another way to think about this. Uh, recently, I, I read a book about why the U.S. men's team will never win the World Cup in, in soccer. So, uh, you know, I'm not a big soccer fan, but it's interesting that, you know, obviously other nations and cultures place a greater emphasis on soccer And in the United States, um, we just haven't been able to cultivate talent in the same way. So, you know, somewhat similarly, I think we can think about nations and societies, cities, ecosystems as like some are more creative than others. And the question is why. Um, And and what I, you know, with soccer, the analogy that I've, I've been talking to different people about this since I know so little and just talking to people who are actually fanatics in other countries. And one of the things they point out is how in the United States, everything is adult supervised when it comes to soccer. It's more this activity that parents get their children into. And so it's always structured. Um, You know, people are brought to practice at a young age. They're taught in techniques and drills. And uh, these leagues are always organized by adults. And what they said was that if you look at places like Brazil or other powerhouses, um, you know, young children... You know, five-year-olds are playing soccer in an alleyway with rocks from, you know, just the earliest of age. And so there's something to that free-form, wild-style, no-adult supervision that, lead, that leads to more creativity in the, in the game. And so it's like these players that come up from those countries just have, you know, years and years of that tacit knowledge accumulated. And so I think the same could be said of entrepreneurship And even, you know, some of these other more creative careers, whether it's like being a poet or a novelist or so on, where I want to say the public school system and just our ideas about education have created a similar system to that soccer idea where, hey, we're going to impose this top down. It's going to be adult supervised and structured. And so what we've lost is um, whatever the entrepreneurial equivalent is of a rock in the street and people kicking it around. Um, when we ran the Teal Fellowship, one of the things that stood out right away was the people who applied and were very successful at climbing up a hierarchy within an institution successfully were not good at like just being entrepreneurs in the wild. So it's like the type of person who's good at uh, writing wonderful essays, studying for exams and acing them. Uh, pleasing committees and winning awards, that type of person is very different from, you know, the wild style creative person, you know, that needs to start a company. And so what we saw was the people who were homeschooled actually just were like ducks to water uh, when they were out in the world. They just had a a greater uh, ability to cope with the uncertainties and structure their own time and set their own goals. Whereas the people who had, you know, climbed to the very tops of the American school system, you know, from prep schools to Harvard, Intel Science Award, they were very brittle in the face of uncertainty and self-direction. So I, I, I think there's something there where, uh, you, know, I'll, I, I, you know, these things don't track perfectly parallel to, to each other, but I think America used to be a much more creative society than it is today. And even though we're still, you know, the leader in the world, I think on an absolute level, we've fallen behind. And, and so I want to say mandatory public schooling, compulsory schooling is is one of the culprits here just because it, it saps the creativity out of people. Can you talk a little bit more about that when you say that you think America used to be more creative than it is now? Intuitively, yeah. that feels correct to me, but I'm curious what you're basing that conclusion on. Right. So one of the big themes in my book and, you know, people like Peter Thiel and Ta- Tyler Cowen have talked about this is this idea of the great stagnation. Um, so generally the idea is sometime around 
1970, 71, if you look at the numbers atta- that economists attach to innovation, um, everything seems to slow down. Uh, so, you know, one wonky stat is called total factor productivity. This is a measure of, you know, what inputs create what outputs. And sure enough, you look at that sometime in the early 70s, you see a, a sharp decline in the rate at which that's improving. So we used to get more for less, much more rapidly. Now it's like, okay, we're, we're, we're making gains, but it's just nowhere near the rate it used to be. And then you can do sector by sector. Um, so the one area we can all acknowledge there's been massive progress is in computers and uh, communication technology, the world of bits. But in the world of atoms, things have been much slower. And when you look at healthcare, one stat that st- stands out for me is 1900, Life expectancy at birth was somewhere around 45 years old. You go to 1980, and you've seen a massive increase, just phenomenal progress, driven by sanitation, uh, but also discoveries like penicillin, um, all the major surgeries that we know of now. Uh, So by 1980, the life expectancy at birth in the United States was somewhere around 73, 72. So you see, you know, 30-year increase almost. Um, whereas from 1980 to the present, uh, you know, life expectancy at birth in the U S is somewhere around 74 years, 75 years now in the last five years, it's gone down because of COVID and then also deaths of despair due to, uh, addiction to fentanyl and other things. So, um, so that's not progress, right? I mean, okay, it's a little bit, but it's not the dramatic progress we saw from 1900 to 1980, um, and I think the same story could be told in other fields, whether that's, you know, it could be energy creation, it could be transportation. Um, but I would argue, I would submit that it's even true in creative fields. Uh, you know, when was the last time you heard anyone discuss the great American novel? Um, I think in the arts, uh, things have gotten worse. We live in a world of, you know, the Madonna Dung piece uh, versus, you know, <laughs> if you look at the Sistine Chapel, uh, by comparison, I think, you know, the nature of art has changed a great deal, architecture too. Um, so it, it, to me, uh, you know, even though we have made progress in some areas more than others, just what stands out is just how little progress we've made, even in creative fields. And, and now even movies are just like retreads. It's like we only get superhero movies that are, you know, some sequel of an already existing franchise instead of something new. Um, you know, when, where, where's the new music. It all just sounds, the same. I mean, maybe I'm an old man, but you know, it's like, it just You're all not sounds wrong. the same. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. And, 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 you know, there, there are lots of reasons for this, but I, I, I can't believe that our school systems are, are helping this at all. But creativity in general is just a mystery. It's one of the, it's one of the most beautiful things about humanity. And yet we know so little about it. Uh, we don't know where it comes from, wh- how it works. We don't know how to cultivate it or teach it. Um, but we do know how to destroy it. We know how to stifle it. Um, and it seems to be the case, or I would argue, that our schools fit in that category. Mm-hmm. 